I'll largely talk about what we found in preparing uh, an AI report uh, about the state of AI in Canada and a call to action to, to our uh, government and to our businesses. Uh, but I'll try to pepper in some of the, my personal thoughts and my personal experiences uh, as we go along. <clears throat> so, if you're here, it's because you want to learn about AI, uh, and maybe you uh, you even understand what AI is, uh, and it's because you believe that AI is important. Uh, obviously, I do too. Um, what we've come to realize in the last five years, perhaps, is that AI, and we'll get into what exactly is AI. It's not machine learning. That's just one part of it. Um, AI is a transformative technology. Uh, it's been tagged as a general purpose technology. That's an official term that only 24 technologies in the history of humankind are sh uh, share. We're talking about things like the steam engine, electricity, computers, internet. These are technologies that are have wide impact across all industries and across all businesses. Um, and it's also a method of inventing methods, essentially. <laughs> um, that means that it opens up uh, a whole new opportunities, a whole new technologies that we just couldn't do before without it, right? Uh, if you think about the steam engine and the impact that that had, you know, in terms of creating business opportunities. Now you can do business with across North America. No longer are you limited to just the area you can reach with a horse and cart. It creates opportunities that just didn't exist before. Um, so it covers all industries. Uh, it's bigger than other technologies per se, right? Uh, because it has that wide impact. Um, and it also has a lot of societal impact. Um, the smartphone wouldn't have such focus on it today if it wasn't for big data and um, and AI. You wouldn't people you wouldn't be concerned about your smartphone listening to you or knowing where you are and and companies understanding all the issues around ethics and privacy and and Big Brother watching. It's because of this technology, right? So. Even something that we think about, oh, the smartphone is what's changing the world, it's, it, it's not. It's, it's the AI, it's the big data behind it. Um, all these issues around risk, privacy, that we'll come, to back, we'll come back to. Uh, and in that context, it also opens up a whole new, different kind of challenges, uh, again, from other technologies. Um, you know, people will often talk about the job loss, and that's a significant one, if it happens in a short period of time. Right? Uh, lots of other technologies have put people out of jobs. There aren't too many secretaries today. The computers have largely replaced them. Um, there's not a lot of farmers. This used to be 45% of human population uh, was in agriculture at the turn of the cent uh, last century in 1900. And yet today it's less than 1%. But that transition happened gradually. So there was time to for people to find new jobs. So AI is really affecting our entire, every aspect of our lives and every aspect of our businesses. Canada is well positioned to be a global leader. We, first and foremost, we are at the very forefront of, of research in AI. Uh, two of the biggest names in deep learning, Joshua Bengio and Jeff Hinton, are Canadian. Uh, Rich Sutton, who is the Godfather of reinforcement learning is in Edmonton. Um, those three universities, University of Montreal, University of Toronto, and University of Alberta, are widely recognized among the top, top AI universities. Um, we are producing top talent. There's no denying it. Uh, but that's not what's going to change the world. Talent is just one aspect. In order for us, for Canada, to seize that opportunity and really become a leader, not just in academics and research, but in industry, uh, we have to do a lot more. And in particular, we need to build demand for this talent. Just as a show of hands, um, how many people here can think of a Canadian company, successful tech Canadian company? Okay. Other than Shopify? <laughs> Okay, still a few hands up. Uh, yeah. Sleep and sleep, we're at $800 million. 
Fully complete. The guy behind you also had you sent up. A Canadian tech company, successful Canadian tech company. Okay, other other than Shopify. Blackberry, how successful is it today? <laughs> it was, you're right. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not talking startups. How many people can think of an American successful tech company? Other than Google and Facebook and Amazon? There's still tons, right? Um, we haven't really produced an ecosystem of successful tech companies, which is what we need in order to really truly be successful in AI. Um, but even outside of tech, what we see, you know, we have big representation here. I've already saw from the big banks, from other uh, industries. We have not embraced it, AI yet uh, in the way that we should. We haven't created jobs in the way we should. Um, because there's a lot of, again, going back to the hype and the mystery around it, uh, but also Canadians are just inherently less, more risk adverse. We're, we're not risk takers the way uh, the US is, for example. Um, a lot of the uh, investment that we have made, so everybody here presumably knows about Vector, Mila, Amy, uh, 125 million investments across Canada in, in AI institutes, they're playing to our strengths. Let's get more talent out there. But that talent just leaves Canada and, and goes elsewhere or just as bad, works in Canada for companies that make money elsewhere, right? It's great that Amazon and Microsoft and Facebook and all these companies are opening up offices in Toronto and in Montreal and Ed there's a deep mine lab in Edmonton, but that all that money, just all the value that they're creating uh, is just leaving the country. Um, And then there's that call to action. Canada, the, go the Canadian government, needs to support our businesses in order to be able to capitalize uh, on this opportunity. Oh boy, I am running out of battery. Uh, Alex, do you mind grabbing the uh, power charger? Power supply? What? Power supply? Power supply. <laughs> Thank you. That's what happens when you work on the plane all day. Okay. Um, so the race is on. Canada can't be complacent. They can't, we can't just sit here and say, yeah, we're, we're the top research and academic, uh, or among the top uh, research and academic uh, country in the world in AI. We need to actually seize this opportunity. Um, we'll often talk about the three things that have come together to make AI possible today and why it's exciting. First and foremost, it's data. Um, availability of data today uh, is just unlike anything we've seen in the past. Uh, it's estimated that we're more than doubling the amount of data in the world uh, almost on a yearly basis. Um, I'm going to mention two, the two other reasons, but just know that I firmly believe that data is, is by far the number one reason. Uh, the second one is um, uh, hardware. So the hardware is getting better. We can process that amount of data at a more reasonable time frame to, to iterate and get better. Uh, and then the ML algorithms, of course, things like deep learning and others, um, are making you know, our ability to gain insight out of the data uh, much better. But going back to the data, that's, that's why companies like Facebook, like Google, like Amazon, are so successful. They've been built from the ground up based on data they're collecting. Every click, every decision you make on those platforms is being tracked and saved, and then insights are being driven out of it. Um, my wife uh, gets really pissed off when we go to the store and then they ask us for their email address. It annoys her to no end, because it is. They don't really need it to process my transaction at the store. They're just trying to replicate what Amazon already has, which is they know everything you're buying, right? Now the store wants to do that too. I usually deny them, by the way, in case you didn't know. Yes, you don't have to give your email. Um, but that's the data that everybody's after. What are you doing? What are, how are you making decisions? How, how can they help you make the decision that they want you to make, ultimately? Um, if we leave it up to Amazon, the Google, and Facebook of the world, um, then Canada will be left in the dust. Uh, is there? Yeah. 
Oh, but this is not connected. The podium is not connected? Yeah. Okay. So what will it take for us to be uh, a true leader? Um, so we talked about the access to talent. Yes, we have access to talent. Um, digital infrastructure, we're not doing too badly there. Access to funding uh, is a problem. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time in startups, and a lot of the time was spent uh, asking for money from VCs, from government. Um, we've actually been told by one uh, VC at some point that if we can move our startup to the Valley, they'll give us about three times more than they were willing to give us in Toronto. Right? Uh, just the willingness to invest in companies there is just that much higher. Um, Quality of data, I mentioned already. Uh, we just need to get better at collecting and uh, managing it. Uh, knowledgeable consumers, we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, and then the innovation ecosystem. So we're not doing too badly. Again, going back to the whole research, uh, we, are, we are innovative, we're just not risk takers. Uh, and then the essential safeguards, uh, again, around the privacy, the risk. Uh, and again, I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. So uh, what did we find in the report after all that preamble? Uh, well, things are actually pretty dire. Um, only about 16% of businesses today in Canada are investing heavily in AI. This is a, this is a technology that's going to transform the world. That's a general purpose technology. And yet, less than a fifth of the companies are actually investing, almost a sixth. Um, and even more worrying is the fact that this number has barely budged since 2014. So yes, we have more startups, but companies have also failed and are reluctant to invest more today. This report and, and these numbers are all uh, based on a survey we conducted uh, in the fall. Uh, it, it covered 2,500 uh, different companies across all industries in Canada. Uh, and uh, some of the results you'll see also about private citizens, those, uh, about 1,000 uh, people were uh, answer the questions. So yes, we have the supply, but we don't have the demand. Even though we've five, we 500% we more, so 5x uh, time more AI-related jobs today in Canada than there were uh, in 2014, we're still way behind where some of the other places in the world are when it comes to AI-related jobs. Um, when Canadian businesses adopt these technologies, it creates a market for Canadian businesses to deliver those technologies, right? That, that should be self-evident. Um, so let's talk about that a bit more. Based, we surveyed the early adopters of AI in Canada and try to understand what, where they are today with respect to AI technology and what struggles they're seeing. And we've identified four barriers um, to successfully adopting AI strategies. By the way, since I've joined Deloitte, I've used the word strategy way, way more, more than ever in my life before. Um, but I was, just, uh, I was just talking with one of my colleagues, and uh, it took me a while to understand that AI tech strategy is actually an important concept. Uh, I've seen a lot of AI strategy docs over the last uh, year and a half, and, and they're all pretty much the same. You gotta hire, you gotta get a C-suite uh, buy-in, you've gotta invest in infrastructure, you gotta get your data in order. Uh, some of the things that we're talking about here. The important part is not the content so much of the document as the fact that you've actually went through the exercise of thinking what you need to do before you actually start doing it. Right? Just uh, how many people here are developers or some kind of programming background, right? You, do, you sit down, you do a sprint planning every two weeks, you have a product roadmap, Right? You know what you're doing, you know where you're going, where you want to get to, same thing. All right. Um, okay, so barrier number one, lack of understanding. Uh, how many people here think they can explain what AI is? And I'm going to ask you, so if you raise your hand, you're going to have to speak up, just so you know. Give me the two-sentence version. Our intelligence, but on a much narrower task. Like you're not replicating the human brain, it's replicating specific tasks what the human brain can do. So, replic so just so everybody can hear, it's replicating 
what the human brain can do on a narrow level on a particular task. You had another explanation here? I would define AI as uh, one way of automating things, but according to the situation. So AI is more looking into the situation using data and then making decisions. Uh, okay. The so I just need a two se sentence version. That's good. So replicate automating based on data. Anybody wants to take another crack at it? And by the way, I'm not saying any of these are wrong or right. I think everybody has their own sense of what AI is. A using computer to do automatic tasks that take humans a lot longer. Doing comp taking, using computers to, auto to automatically do tasks that humans will take longer. How many people here thought machine learning or deep learning in their heads when I, said, when I say AI, every time I say AI? Well, OK, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Deep learning is not AI. Deep learning is one thing. It's how to take data and convert it into insights or actions or tasks. But AI is, uh, is a lot more. It's about carrying out tasks. It's about replicating human ability. Um, it's about it's about making intelligent decisions, I would say. Right? Uh, gaming AI. People have heard that term before, right? Pong from 1970s had a gaming AI. You could play against the computer. The computer would make intelligent decisions. There was no data behind it. There was no neural networks behind it. But it was still a gaming AI. The decisions were intelligent based on heuristics and rules based, and that's fine. And by the way, uh, until while well, I was studying machine learning, I did not study AI. I studied machine learning. Um, AI was studying symbolic representations and uh, rule based. Uh, stuff and how to create these uh, same intelligent decision that we're making today, um, but in very different ways. Machine learning was machine learning. Computer vision was computer vision. NLP was NLP. Uh, there was very little overlap between those fields. Um, and, even, and AI was kind of a separate thing altogether. And now everything, all of that came together thanks to uh, deep learning. So just as a side note, I promise to give you some personal tidbits. So uh, pretty good. People here feel like they know what AI. Only 4% of Canadians, of the pop rest of the population, feels that they can explain what AI is. Um, and what's probably completely mind-boggling is that almost 50% of Canadians say that they don't use AI and they don't think they will use AI any time soon, any time in the next five years. Uh, but of course, they, have, they probably have a smartphone. They probably use Google Maps or Siri uh, or, or Netflix and use the recommendation engine on Netflix. So they are using AI, they're interacting with AI on a daily basis, and they're not even realizing it. Um, but if they don't understand it, and they don't realize it, how can we accept them, expect them to adopt it and go after it and seek it out? Right? So that's problem number one. Uh, problem number two is lack of trust. So we talked a little bit about privacy and ethics. I'm assuming everybody here has heard of Facebook and what's been going on over there for the last year, year and a half. Um, by the way, interesting fact, uh, in a recent survey, uh, more than 40% of US citizens don't trust Facebook anymore. Uh, Google, Apple, Amazon, those numbers have stayed very stable at around just under 20%, along with pretty much all other big tech companies. Um, even though they're doing the exact same thing, they're collecting the data, they're doing the data, they're using the data, and you don't have any insight into what they're doing with your data. But they heard about Facebook, and they know what Facebook is doing, so now they don't trust it. So when you ask people, do you trust AI, the answer is no, even though they're clicking on the recommendations at Netflix. Um, some of this is legitimate. Uh, the idea that some black box is, is, is making a decision that you don't know how it made, it can be very important uh, if it's making it in the right context. So, uh, I saw a talk, an interesting talk at NeurIPS about uh, pneumonia. And they built a model using machine learnings to predict who, you know, should you go and seek out treatment when you get, when you have symptoms of pneumonia. Um, and, and of course, neural networks did the best. Logistic regression did significantly worse. Uh, and yet, when they started doing analysis, they discovered that people with uh, history of uh, history of heart disease and asthma were told, uh, "You're okay. Don't don't go and seek." Uh, treatment. 
because the data suggested that they're not likely to, they're likely to recover on their own. And of course the data was wrong, was collected badly, was tagged badly because it was based on who had the symptoms and who survived. And of course people with history of disease, heart disease and, and asthma, when they get symptoms, they go in and seek help right away. And sometimes it's pneumonia, sometimes it's something else. Pneumonia, by the way, uh, FYI, is, is, is about 10% uh, mortality rate if, if you don't get treated. Um, so in a case like this, you want to understand how the model made the decision and make sure that it's making the right decisions, right? Uh, if you're deciding uh, who to give a mortgage to and how much to give it to them, you want to understand why the decision being made. Uh, another example, by the way, is the, the so the U.S. deployed uh, a learning algorithm to decide whether or not uh, you should give bail to, to uh, a court hearing. And, and again, when you peel under it, it's making all kind of biased decisions based on the data because the data is inherently biased. So in those situations, you don't want to just trust the model. Just you, you want to understand what's going on. But in other cases where you're building a product, you know, if you're deciding, trying to put uh, recommendations in front of your customers, uh, try to figure out who is going to leave your company as a customer and, and maybe take some actions to try to entice them to stay longer, uh, it's better to make a slightly wrong decision or a biased decision than don't, than don't make any decision at all, right? Uh, I like to say the it's the hot dog, not hot dog problem. And hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, where the decision is not so important that you have to make, you know, to consider all the variables that go into making the decision. Just make the decision, right? So, so this idea of mistrust in AI uh, is can be justified, but it's not always. All right, uh, low awareness. So again, we talked about people don't understand what it is, but people also don't uh, know what's available. Uh, a lot of what we do here is sit with companies and help them figure out what problems they want to tackle with using AI. Um, if I told you that I need to write a letter, you would probably told me to use uh, Microsoft Word or Google Docs, you know what tool is available. Uh, if I tell you that I want to make a recommendation, well, you guys probably can recommend uh, some tools for that, but typically, uh, you know, you might not, uh, our companies and our people in Canada don't know what to use for that. And more importantly, they don't even know what's available to solve problems that they haven't even thought about, right? All of a sudden, when you know what's available, oh, I can use it for this problem that I didn't even realize that I have. Uh, so awareness is, is a big one. Uh, even when we have supply, we're not good at marketing ourselves. We're not good at advertising. Uh, this is a problem for Canada, not just uh, with respect to AI, but across all businesses, across all industries. Um, it, it's, it's just... We're not good business people. Um, and then the inability to scale. So again, among early adopters, um, less than a quarter have, have said that they take, they, they've been able to scale their AI uh, investments into uh, big ROI initiatives, uh, at least one. And, and most of them uh, have five or less experiments that they're carrying. And, and I'm using that word on purpose. They're not driving value, they're just doing experiments with AI. And that goes to the, some of the other challenges around adopting AI, which is the hard part is not creating the models or building machine learning. The hard part is getting the, all the system around it to work together, to get the data from where it is today to a point where the end user, the end customer can uh, deliver value out of it. And this ties back to what I was talking before about the AI strategy. You have to have an AI strategy about what you're going to do with this to drive your business forward. All right. Um, so I promise that you'll get a taste of what executives get to hear from us. Uh, a lot of it is a call to action to the Canadian government and to the businesses to work more closely together to create opportunities, to create funding, not just in producing talent, but in job creation. I mentioned the VC funding problem that we have here. Um, the policies around privacy, around ethics, we're sitting on the sideline right now, and we're letting other people in other countries dictate to us what's going to happen, right? GDPR is coming out of Europe. Open banking is coming out of Europe, right? 
what we should be on the forefront saying this is what's right. Um, I'm not saying we should let loose. China is letting everybody do whatever they want with all with, with the data, and, and uh, I don't think we should be there. But we should we should be saying what you can and can't do uh, instead of sitting on the sideline. Uh, right. So that's it. Um, if we if we just keep investing in our talent, we'll keep exporting it uh, and not really gain the benefit from our, from our efforts. So uh, yes, we need to educate. Uh, it's very important. Uh, but we also need to uh, spread the word around and, and advertise and do the PR and get everybody excited about AI and then actually getting those projects to a point where there's value being driven, right? Um, that's it. Thank you.